Good morning grade sixes and welcome back to English and to Worksheet Cloud. My name is Mrs. Fauge and um, we are carrying on with our lesson for today. We're actually going to look at our novel again and so remember if you've got any questions you can email me at grade six at worksheetcloud.com. As I read we've got a couple of um, pictures along the way that I want to show you and so um, find a comfy spot to sit and listen as we read together. So we left off um, with his birthday party and there were a few people that came but mostly family and so you can imagine how hard that must be for him. So we start off on page 68 and the title is Halloween. At lunch the next day Summer asked me what I was going to be for Halloween. Of course I'd been thinking about it since last Halloween, so I knew right away. Boba Fett. So this is Boba Fett over here. You know, you can wear a costume to school on Halloween, right? No way, really. So long as it's pol politically correct. What? Like no guns and stuff? Exactly. What about blasters? I think a blaster's like a gun, Augie. Oh man, I said shaking my head, Boba Fett has a blaster. At least we don't have to come like a character in a book anymore. In the lower school, that's what you had to do. Last year, I was the Wicked Witch of the West from the Wizard of Oz. Not sure if you've seen the Wizard of Oz, um, but a lovely old, old story and there is a movie on it as well. But that's a movie, not a book. Hello, Summer answered. It was a book first. One of my favorite books in the world, actually. My dad used to read it to me every night in the first grade. When Summer talks, especially when she's excited about something, her eyes squint like she's looking right at the sun. I hardly ever see Summer during the day, since the only class we have together is English. But ever since that first lunch at school, we've sat at the summer table together every day, just the two of us. So, what are you going to be? I ask her. I don't know yet. I know what I'd really want to go as, but I think it might be too dorky. You know, Savannah's group isn't even wearing costumes this year. They think we're too old for Halloween. What? That's just dumb. I know, right? I thought you didn't care what those girls think. She shrugged and took a long drink of her milk. So, what dorky thing do you want to dress up as? I asked her, smiling. Promise not to laugh. She raised her eyebrows and her shoulders. Embarrassed. A unicorn. I smiled and looked down at my sandwich. Hey, you promised not to laugh, she laughed. Okay, okay, I said. But you're right, that is too dorky. I know, she said, but I had it all planned out. I'd make the head out of paper mache and paint the horn gold and make, make the main gold too be so awesome. So as you can see on the screen there's the unicorn and then paper mache. I see that I'm a little bit in the way here. Paper mache is where, I don't know if you've ever done this, where you blow up a balloon and then you take paper and you wet it with a certain kind of glue and then you put it over the um, balloon and it dries and then you pop the balloon and then you've got this um, shape which you can use as a head or and that's what she wants to do. She wants to make a paper mache um, head and with a, with a unicorn on the end. Um, maybe what I'll do is just wear it for the Halloween parade, she said, snapping her fingers, and I'll just be like the goth girl for school. Yeah, that's it. That's what I'll do. Sounds like a plan, I nodded. Thanks, Augie, she giggled. You know that's what I like best about you. I feel like I can tell you anything. Yeah, I said, nodding. I gave her a thumbs up sign. Cool beans. School pictures. I don't think anyone will be shocked to learn I don't want to have my school picture taken on October the 22nd. No way. No thank you. I stopped letting anyone take pictures of me a while ago. I guess you could call it a phobia. No, actually, it's not a phobia. It's an aversion which is a word I just learned in Mr. Brown's class. I have an aversion to having my picture taken. There, I used it in a sentence. 
I thought mom would try to get me to drop my aversion to having my picture taken for school, but she didn't. Unfortunately, while I managed to avoid having the portrait taken, I couldn't get out of being part of the class picture. Oh, the, photog the photographer looked like he just sucked on a le lemon when he saw me. I'm sure he thought I ruined the picture. I was one of the ones in the front, sitting down. I didn't smile. Not that anyone could tell if I had. The cheese touch. I noticed not too long ago that even though people were getting used to me, no one would actually touch me. I didn't realize this at first because it's not like kids go around touching each other that much in middle school anyway. But last Thursday in dance class, which is like my least favorite class, Mrs. N Antonabi, different name, the teacher, tried to make Zamama and Zamama Chin be my dance part. Now, I've never actually seen someone have a panic attack before, but I have heard about it, and I'm pretty sure Zamama had a panic attack at that second. She got really nervous and turned pale and literally broke into a sweat within a minute. And then she came up with some lame excuse about really having to go to the bathroom. Anyway, Miss Atanabi let her off the hook because she ended up not making anyone dance together. Then yesterday in my science elective, we were doing this cool mystery powder investigation where we had to classify a substance as an acid or a base. Everyone had to heat their mystery powders on a heating plate and make observations. So we were all huddled around the powders with our notebooks. Now, there are eight kids in the elective and seven of them were squished, squished together on one side of the plate, while one of them, me, had loads of room on the other side. So of course I noticed this, but I was hoping Miss Reuben wouldn't notice this, because I didn't want her to say something. But of course, she did notice this, and of course, she said something. Guys, there's plenty of room on that side. Tristan, Nina, go over there, she said. So Tristan and Nina scooted over to my side. Tristan and Nina have always been okay nice to me. I want to go on record as saying that. Not super nice, like they go out of their way to hang out with me, but okay nice, like they say hello to me and talk to me like normal. And they didn't even make a face when Miss Reuben told them to come on my side, which a lot of kids do when they think I'm not looking. Anyway, everything was going fine until Tristan, Tristan's mystery powder started melting. He moved his foil off the plate just as my powder began to melt, too, which is why I went to move mine off the plate. And then my hand accidentally bumped his hand for a fraction of a second. Tristan jerked his hand away so fast he dropped his foil on the plate, while also knocking everyone else's foil off the heating plate. Tristan! yelled Miss Reuben, but Tristan didn't even care about the spilled powder on the floor or that he ruined the experiment. What he was most concerned about was getting to the lab sink to wash his hands as fast as possible. That's when I knew for sure that there was this thing about touching me at Beecher Prep. I think it's like the cheese touch in Diary of a Wimpy Kid. So I know there it is on the screen. If you haven't read the book, um, maybe it's something that you'd like to do. Um, the kids in the story in Diary of a Wimpy Kid we were afraid that they'd catch the cooties if they touched the old moldy cheese on the basketball court. At Beecher Prep, I'm the old moldy cheese. Sure, quite hot. Right, costumes. For me, Halloween is the best holiday in the world. It even beats Christmas. I get to dress up in a costume. I get to wear a mask. I get to go around like every other kid with a mask. And nobody thinks I look weird. Nobody takes a second look. Nobody notices me. Nobody knows me. I wish every day could be Halloween. We could all wear masks all the time. Then we could walk around and get to know each other before we got to see what we looked like under the masks. Sure. Interesting that time. When I was little, I used to wear an astronaut helmet. So let's take a look. I'm going to have to move myself around here quickly so you can see the pictures. Um... I used to wear an astronaut helmet everywhere, to the playground, to the supermarket, to pick Thea up from school, <clears throat> even in the middle <coughs> sorry, of summer, though it was so hot my face would sweat. 
I think I wore it for a couple of years, but I had to stop wearing it when I had my eye surgery. I was about seven, I think, and then we couldn't find a helmet after that. Mom looked everywhere for it. She figured that it had probably ended up in Gran's attic, and she kept meaning to look for it, but by then I had gotten used to not wearing it. I have pictures of me in all my Halloween costumes. My first Halloween, I was a pumpkin. There we go. My second, I was Tigger. My third, I was Peter Pan. My fourth, I was Captain Hook. My dad dressed up as Peter Pan. My fifth, I was an astronaut. There we go. My sixth, I was Obi-Wan Kenobi. That's that guy over there from Star Wars, I think. My seventh, I was a clone trooper, which is that over there. My eighth, I was Darth Vader. My ninth, I was Bleeding Scream, the one that has fake blood oozing out over the skull mask. I didn't want to put that picture, guys, um, because I didn't want to um, make anybody look at something that's not really pretty to look at. This year, I'm going to be Boba Fett. Not Boba Fett, the kid in Star Wars episode 2, Attack of the Clones, but Boba Fett, the man from Star Wars episode 5. And that's that guy over there. Mom searched every for the, everywhere for the costume, but couldn't find one in my size. So she bought me a Django Fett costume, since Django was Boba's dad and wore the same armor, and then painted the armor green. She did some other stuff to make it look worn, too. Anyway, it looks totally awesome. Mom's good at costumes. In Homeroom, we all talked about what we are going to be for Halloween. Charlotte was going as Hermione from Harry Potter. Jack was going as Wolfman. I heard that Julian was going as Django Fett, which was a weird coincidence. Coincidence. I don't think he liked hearing that I was going as Boba Fett. On the morning of Halloween, Fia had this big crying meltdown about something. Fia's always been so calm and cool, but this year she'd had a couple of these kind of fits. Dad was late for work and was like, Via, let's go, let's go. Usually Dad is super patient about things, but not when it comes to his being late for work. And his yelling just stressed out Via even more, and she started crying louder. So Mom told Dad to take me to school and that she'd deal with Via. Then Mom kissed me goodbye quickly before I put on my costume and disappeared into Via's room. Augie, let's go now, said Dad. I have a meeting I can't be late for. I haven't put on my costume yet, so put it on already. Five minutes, I'll meet you outside. I rushed to my room and started to put on my Boba Fett costume, but all of a sudden, I didn't feel like wearing it. I'm not sure why. Maybe because it had all these belts that needed to be tightened, and I needed someone's help to put it on. Or maybe it was because it smelled a little like paint. All I knew was that it was a lot of work to put the costume on, and Dad was waiting and would get super impatient if I made him late. So at the last minute, I threw on the Bleeding Scream costume from last year. It was such an easy costume, just a long black robe and a big white mask. I yelled goodbye from the door on my way out, but Mom didn't even hear me. I thought you were going as Django Fett, said Dad, when I got outside. Boba Fett. Whatever, said Dad. This is a better costume anyway. Yeah, it's cool, I answered. The Bleeding Scream. Walking through the halls that morning on my way to the lockers, was, I have to say, absolutely awesome. Everything was different now. I was different. Where I usually walked with my head down, trying to avoid being seen, today I walked with my head up, looking around. I wanted to be seen. One kid wearing the exact same costume as mine, long white skull face, oozing fake red blood, high-fived me as we passed each other on the stairs. I had no idea who he was, and he had no idea who I was. And I wondered for a second if he would ever have done that, if it, he'd known it was me under that mask. I was starting to think this was going to go down as one of the most awesome days in the history of my life. But then I got to homeroom. It's quite an interesting part, guys. The first costume I saw as I walked inside the door was Darth Sidious. It had one of those the rubber masks that are so realistic with a big black hood over the head and a long black robe. I knew right away it was Julian, of course. He must have changed his costume at the last minute because he thought I was coming as Django Fett. He was talking to two mummies who must have been Miles and Henry, and they were all kind of looking at the door like they were waiting for someone to come through it. 
I knew it wasn't bleeding scream they were looking for. It was a Boba Fett. I was going to go and sit at my usual desk, but for some reason, I don't know why, I found myself walking over to a desk near them, and I could hear them talking. One of the mummies was saying, It really does look like him. Like this part especially, answered Julian's voice. He put his fingers on the cheeks and eyes of his Darth Sidious mask. Actually, said the mummy, what he really looks like is one of those shrunken heads. Have you ever seen those? He looks exactly like that. I think he looks like an orc. Oh, yeah. If I look like that, said Julian's voice, kind of laughing, I swear to goodness, I'd put a hood over my face every day. I've thought about this a lot, said the second mummy, sounding serious. And I really think, if I looked like him, seriously, think that I'd kill myself. You would not, answered Darth Sidious. Yeah, for real, insisted the same mummy. Can't imagine looking in the mirror every day and seeing myself like that. It would be too awful. And getting stared at all the time. Then why do you hang out with him so much? asked Darth Sidious. I don't know, answered the mummy. Tushman asked me to hang out with him at the beginning of the year, and he must have told all the teachers to put us next to each other in all our classes or something. The mummy shrugged. I knew the shrug, of course. I knew the voice. I knew I wanted to run out of the class right then and there. But I stood where I was and listened to Jack Wolf finish what he was saying. I mean, the thing is, he always follows me around. What am I supposed to do? Just ditch him, said Julian. I don't know what Jack answered because I walked out of the class without anyone knowing I had been there. My face felt like it was on fire while I walked back down the stairs. I was sweating under my costume and I started crying. I couldn't keep it from happening. The tears were so thick in my eyes I could barely see it, but I couldn't wipe them through the mask as I walked. I was looking for a little tiny spot to disappear in, too. I wanted a hole I could fall inside of, a little black hole that would eat me up. Wow, guys. And I know school is quite tough when we are physically at the building, and maybe you've had an experience like that where you've been teased or you've heard people talking about you, um, and it's not easy. And I hope you remember that sometimes when people do that, it's not so much about you, but about them and their insecurities. So let's go on to uh, page 79. The chapter is called Names. Rat Boy, Freak, Monster, Freddy Krueger, E.T., Gross Out, Lizard Face, Mutant. I know the names they call me. I've been in enough playgrounds to know kids can be mean. I know, I know, I know. I ended up in the second floor bathroom. No one was there because first period had started and everyone was in class. I locked the door to my stall and took off my mask and just cried, for I don't know how long. Then I went to the nurse's office and told her I had a stomach ache, which was true because I felt like I'd been kicked in the guts. Nurse Wani called Mom and had me lie down on the sofa next to her desk. Fifteen minutes later, Mom was at the door. Sweetness, she said, coming over to hug me. Hi, I mumbled. I didn't want her to ask anything until afterward. You have a stomach ache? She asked, automatically putting her hand on my forehead to check for my temperature. He said he feels like throwing up, said Nurse Molly, looking at me with very nice eyes. And I have a headache, I whispered. I wonder if it's something you ate, said Mom, looking worried. There's a stomach bug going around, said Nurse Molly. Oh, jeez, said Mom, her eyebrows going up as she shook her head. She helped me to my feet. Should I call a taxi or are you okay walking home? I can walk. I'm not sure about you, but how, how many times have you felt sick and wanted to go home from school, but not because you were sick? And so it's probably a blessing sometimes now to not be at school for that reason, hey? What a brave kid, said Nurse Molly, patting me on the back as she walked us toward the door. If he starts throwing up or runs a temperature, you should call the doctor. Absolutely, said Mom, shaking Nurse Molly's hand. Thank you so much for taking care of him. My pleasure, answered Nurse Molly, putting her hand under my chin and tilting my face up. You take care of yourself, okay? I nodded and mumbled. Thank you. Mom and I had walked the whole way home. I didn't tell her anything about what had happened, and later when she asked me if I felt well enough to go trick-or-treating after school, I said no. This worried her, since she knew how much I usually loved trick-or-treating. 
I heard her say to Dad on the phone, he doesn't even have the energy to go trick-or-treating. No, no fever at all. Well, I will if he doesn't feel better by tomorrow. I know, poor thing. Imagine him missing Halloween. I got out of going to school the next day too, which was Friday, so I had the whole weekend to think about everything. I was pretty sure I would never go back to school again. Okay, I see that we are on a different slide. Right, so we now move on to a new section called part two, which is about Via. It has got a part of a song by David Bowie called Space Oddity. And there's some words that say, far above the world, planet Earth is blue and there's nothing I can do. And so what I thought I'd do before we, we start reading this um, part is we will listen to the song. So here we go. Ground control to Major Tom. Ground control to Major Tom. Take your protein pills and put your helmet on. Ground control Nine, to Major Tom. Eight, seven, six, five, four. Lift off. So I'm going to stop there. Um, I will send you the link, but you can always just search David Bowie and Space Oddity. And a few things that maybe relate to August in terms of the helmet and stepping out there if you dare. Let's see in part two how that relates to Via. Right, so we're going to look at this next part. A tour of the galaxy. And this is where we'll end today. August is the sun. Me and mom and dad are planets orbiting the sun. So I just thought I'd put a picture there just so you can see there's the sun and the planets orbiting the sun. So revolving around the sun. And let's think about that and what she means. So she's using a metaphor there. August is the sun and they are planets orbiting. The rest of our family and friends are asteroids and comets floating around the planets orbiting the sun. The only celestial body that doesn't orbit August the sun is Daisy the dog. And that's only because to her little doggy eyes, August's face doesn't look very different from any other human's face. To Daisy, all our faces look alike, as flat and pale as the moon. I'm used to the way this universe works. I've never minded it, because it's all I've ever known. I've always understood that August is special and has special needs. If I was playing too loudly and he was trying to take a nap, I knew I would have to play something else because he needed his rest after some procedure or other that had left him weak and in pain. If I wanted mom and dad to watch me play soccer, I knew that nine times out of ten they'd miss it because they were busy shuttling August to speech therapy or physical therapy or a new specialist or a surgery. Mom and dad would always say I was the most understanding little girl in the world. I don't know about that, just that I understood that there was no point in complaining. I've seen August after his surgeries, his little face bandaged up and swollen, 
his tiny body full of IVs and tubes to keep him alive. After you've seen someone else going through that, it feels kind of crazy to complain over not getting the toy you had asked for, or your mum missing a school play. I knew this even when I was six years old. No one ever told me, I just knew it. So I've gotten used to not complaining, and I've gotten used to not bothering mum and dad with little stuff. I've gotten used to figuring things out on my own, how to put toys together, how to organise my life so I don't miss friends' birthday parties, how to stay on top of my schoolwork so I never fall behind in class. I've never asked for help with my homework, never needed reminding to finish a project or study for a test. If I was having trouble with a subject in school, I'd go home and study it, study it until I figured it out on my own. I taught myself how to convert fractions into decimal points by going online. I've done every school project pretty much by myself. When mum or dad asked me how things are going in school, I've always said, good, even when it hasn't always been good. My worst day, worst fall, worst headache, worst bruise, worst cramp, worst mean thing anyone could say has always been nothing compared to what August has gone through. This isn't me being noble, by the way. It's just the way I know it is. And this is the way it's always been for me, for the little universe of us. But this year there seems to be a shift in the cosmo. The galaxy is changing. Planets are falling out of alignment. And that is where we're going to stop today. So what does she mean by planets falling out of alignment? So things aren't as smooth and um, in a routine as perhaps they normally would be. And so we've come to the end. This is our intermission where we stop and have a break. Remember, I will have an activity for you. And then if you've got any questions about today's lesson, you can email me at grade 6 at worksheetcloud.com. Thank you, grade 6 so much for joining um, this Worksheet Cloud lesson. I do hope you are enjoying them. Please send me an email at um, that email address if you've got anything that you'd like to ask. And remember, I will be here, same time, same place. Bye, everybody.